men can, you know, may not be able to come to that, creates praise from your heart. What else? All his work, I'm still looking at verse 4, it says, all his work is done in truth. Again, another attribute of God, all his work is done in truth. In truth. There is no lie in him, there is no deception in God. That causes us to praise him. Verse 5, he loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap. He lays up the deep in storehouses. So what, you know, creates the praise from your heart is when you consider these things, when you take a step back, when you slow down, when you quiet down, and you begin to consider what scripture is laying out here for us in Psalm 33, verse 48, it should create praise, right? It should create you beginning to, you know, uh, you know the Old Testament would say, extol his name, right? You begin to magnify him. You begin to say, hey, God, you are so great. You are so awesome. When you consider his goodness in your life, in your family, in your own affairs, it drives you to praise his name. And then you begin to make melodious sounds to him. You know, if you're one who is skilled with the instruments, you actually get on the piano and you begin to just let the melodies flow from your heart. You're praising and magnifying your creator. Amen. All right, so we'll try to look at those three, uh, three things laid out in Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. You know, praising the Lord with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, uh, making melody in your heart. So let's see. All right, let's just go to uh, our lesson outline, lesson outline one. Let's talk about psalms. So it's in our outline, but I'd like to hear from a couple of us. What is a psalm? What is a psalm? Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. What do you think a psalm is? You can look at Google too if you want to. <laughs> what is a psalm? There's a mic that anybody wants to share with us. What do you think a psalm is? What does Google say a psalm is? I got a lot of young people here today. Come on, let's pull out our phones. It's allowed. Check it. What is a psalm? A sacred song or hymn, in particular, any of those contained in the biblical book of Psalms and used in Christian and Jewish worship. Thank you. Thank you, Sonari. Thank you. All right. Now, more specifically, um, was someone else going to share? Okay. More specifically, you know, simply put, a psalm is usually uh, a song that is accompanied with, you know, a stringed instrument at least at the time when, you know, uh, a lot of what we have in scripture uh, were recorded. You know, if you remember, um, you know, King David and King Saul, you know, David was brought in because he was skillful on the harp. And whenever the, the, the King Saul was troubled, David would play on the harp. You know, he would make melody on a stringed instrument. So a psalm was, you know, originally was a song that was accompanied, right, with a stringed instrument, just simply put. Um, just one scripture for reference, Psalm 95, Psalm chapter 95, 98 verse 5 says, sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of a psalm. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp, and the sound of a psalm. So the sound of a, a psalm usually would go along with a stringed instrument. 
which a harp is. Uh, in our day, it could be, you know, uh, uh, a guitar or some other stringed instrument. And someone would sing along and someone would play along. That is a song. Now, what are they for? They are songs to talk to God about his wondrous ways. I guess we're looking at the origins today of this, of this kind of, uh, you know, singing. Uh, Psalm 105, verse 2. It says, sing to him. Psalm 105, verses 2. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Talk of all his wondrous works. So a psalm, you know, at the, at the onset of things, was a, was a song to talk about the wondrous works of God. So someone would, st you know, stand up and begin to recount the wondrous works of God. How he created the heavens and the earth. How he, you know, led the, the Israelites out of, the, out of bondage in Egypt. How he made them, you know, gave them victories over several battles. And someone would play on the harp. On the stringed instruments talking about the wondrous works of god how he parted the red sea and the, the israelites were able to walk on dry ground they would talk of the wondrous works you can do the same today right that's why we're learning this remember what i said at the beginning when we learn from our manual this year we are not just learning to gather knowledge we are learning so that we can do the word amen all right now there are different types of psalm um, I think uh, in our outline here, there are seven listed, um, but I think they can, they can really be grouped further into five, but we won't have the time to really dig into all of that. Uh, but there are some of them listed here. They are, if you like looking through the book of Psalms, they can be uh, kind of categorized into five different, five different categories. And if you also, maybe you spend some time in the Anglican church or the Catholic church, these are some of the things you probably would understand a little bit more. All right. Now, there are psalms of thanksgiving. There are psalms of praise. There are psalms of prophecy. There are the uh, penit penitential psalm, which is a psalm of confession. There's the intercessory psalm. There's the psalm of affliction. And then there's the psalm where you basically are recounting history. Or we can say again, a psalm where you're recalling the wondrous works of God or you are just kind of helping others, you know, who, who are to come to keep in mind what God has done. They are referred to as the didactic, didactic psalms or the psalms of history. You know, there's something really powerful about, about songs. Uh, like I said earlier, I personally, you know, I listen to Frank Sinatra, right? And that, those, the, I mean, the, those songs were not made today. They were made years ago. But I still listen to them today. The melodies is still there. You know, it still makes you think of certain things. It still makes you consider certain things. You know, there are, I'm going to say embraces, Christian songs uh, that, were, that were, you know, made years ago. And we still sing those songs today. Those songs tell about what God has done in the past. They prophesy for the future. And we have those, you know, for our, our equipping today. So there are different types of psalms. Uh, once again, the psalms of thanksgiving. An example of that is what we find in Psalms, uh, Psalms chapter 30. There are psalms of praise, you know, Psalm 145, Psalm 117. There are psalms of prophecy, Psalm chapter 16, Psalm chapter 2. Psalms of confession, Psalm 25 is an example of that. Intercessory psalm, basically a psalm of prayer. The psalm of affliction, you know, when you were crying to God for help, like God, see our affliction, help your people, and history. All right, we'll, we'll just keep going. Uh, we are already out of time. Uh, the next class of uh, what we're considering this morning goes over hymns and spiritual songs. Can someone read for us uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19? Ephesians chapter 5, verses 19. 
speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Amen. And Colossians 3.16 says the same thing. Uh, let's also look at Psalm 42, verse 8, and then we'll talk a little bit about that. Psalm chapter 42, verse 8. In the daytime and in the night, his songs shall be with me and my prayer unto the Lord of my life. Amen. All right, so let's get back to our initial conversation. I had asked, you know, what is a spiritual song, right? What is a, we, we've talked about what a psalm is and we defined it. So now let's discuss a little bit. What do we, what are your thoughts? What is a spiritual song? What is a hymn? Adoration, prayers, and um, requests. Okay. Yeah, hymn, spiritual song. Let's, let's hear from some other people. I think when we started earlier, someone was saying, uh, a spiritual song is a song that takes you into a far away place. What is a spiritual song? Come here, man, you want to say something? <laughs> What is a spiritual song? What is a hymn? What is a spiritual song? What's, why do we consider some songs as spiritual and others as not? Praise the Lord. So spiritual doesn't necessarily mean Jesus godly because the devil is also spiritual. People that connect to stones, it's also spiritual for them as well. So, but I think what we're talking about is, what is a spiritual Jesus godly song? And I think for me, that would mean something that edifies, you know, edifies the spirit, um, that helps me grow, that helps me connect to God, to Jesus God, not, you know, again, a stone God or <laughs> other idol gods. So the word spiritual doesn't necessarily mean Jesus godly. Amen. 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 Thank you for that contribution. So now we are, we are breaking it down a little further. Uh, spiritual, the word spiritual does not always, uh, should, you know, may not always connote uh, what is truly godly, right? It could mean a couple of other things. Spiritual songs, spiritual songs and hymns. Someone could say that a spiritual song is a song that is inspired by God by God. Okay, I'll come back to that thought. Mommy wants to say something. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I think spiritual song is song that connects you spiritually to the realm of the spirit. Either to know everybody has its own spirit that he worship. Why the hymns are the compilation of songs made by people you no, know, in the Orthodox churches, they have their compilation, but they are being inspired by the Holy Spirit to compile those songs. They are the hymns to worship God. Amen. So I'm going to just ask a question there with, from, from what Mommy just said. Uh, do we believe, or what, is, what are your thoughts? Are there songs that are not inspired by the Holy Spirit in the Christian, I guess, the Christian sphere? Do we, do we think there are songs that are not inspired by the Holy Spirit? When, when they start singing it, you won't feel more. But where there are, there are some songs that when immediately they start singing it, your spirit is connected and your heart is open immediately to God. Mm. Okay, still hold the mic, Ma. Why, 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 why is it that in some songs, as soon as they start singing it, it does something for you, it connects you and the others don't. What's, what's different? Um, um, lamb is, is, I don't know how to put it to me. I don't Sorry know to put you on the spot. Just <laughs> give, give it a shot. Give it a shot. But there are some songs that when they are singing it, uh, 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 it touches your heart. Mm. There are some songs that 
when you are singing, when they are singing it, it touches your heart and you will start crying. Tears will just start coming out. You will be moved. But there are some songs, not that you will not be moved, but it's not going to touch the, the deep down of your heart. It's not going to, it's not that it's not going to move you, but it's, it's, it's not going to, it's, it's not going to go down, I don't know how to put it, it's not just, you are not going to go into the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. Not that you won't, you won't, it won't touch you, but it won't, it won't. there are some songs that when I listen to, listen to the lyrics and the words, I will start crying, God, please have mercy on me. Please have mercy on me. I, I have failed you in this way. I have failed you in this way. But there are songs you just sing, just to say I'm appreciating God. So that's how me I can explain it. Does anybody here listen to rock music? Any, any version of rock music? Anybody? Just to the point of, you know, uh, you know, it moving you or something like that. That's what I'm asking that question. Uh, so, uh, to that aspect, you know, we all like have different songs to life. Like, I, I don't have no genre. If it's good music, I'll listen to it. And the wordings matters, your state of mind, what you're going through at that point. Uh, no, so my favorite song change depending on my mood or what song I'm li listening to then. No, I remember when Nathan Abbas released that alone rock by his song. You know, the wording, just that first sentence was like, wow. And also too, there was this song that uh, talk about just the name of Jesus, and it was like, sometimes it's as simple as, you know, you listening to your grandfather telling you a story, you just believe it. It's as also as complicated to when you're talking about childbirth. So sometimes the wording of the songs just blows your mind and make you think deep. And sometimes it's just the beat. Like, you can take away the music and just give me a good beat, I'll be moved, I will dance whether it's been spiritual or not. But also, too, there's that point where the Holy Spirit to just take over you, the same song you sang yesterday, you sing it, and it just captivates you. I guess what I'm trying to get to, maybe I should ask, ask the question a better way. When we say something gets you, what is, why is it getting you? What is getting you? It's what I'm trying to understand. You know, what is the, what is, he says maybe some of the words, uh, you know, what is in the word, that gets you. Why does it get you? Why do I hear these words and, you know, I don't even pay attention to it and I hear a couple other words and it has an impact on me? Can, can, we, can we talk about that? What is, what is in a word or what is the word, what is in the word in a spiritual song that ministers to you, connects you to the throne of grace, you know, leaves you flat on the floor? What is in the word? At times, at times, it will be a word on the situation that one is going through. At times, God may want to try to prove something for it, prove something to you. And uh, when the song is going on and it's, it's your mind, your memories start counting on the, situa the song and uh, what you, you are going through, then all you just need to do is just burst into tears or you just be carried away and just be appreciating God for who he is and for how marvelous his faithfulness is to your life. Amen. Thank you very much. All right. So I'm asking these questions because I, I think what I, I want us to take away um, something. You see, words, <laughs> words do matter, right? Words do matter. And I think Diola was making a comment about the, the state of my heart and things like that. Um, so words do matter. You remember when we, when we started earlier and we're talking about psalms and we say that, you know, a psalm is a song that is, you know, sang on a, on a stringed instrument. And we read from Psalm 33, from verse 4 to 8, and he started listing out some of the things almost, or some of the reasons why we praise God. Some of the reasons why we begin to sing to God. 
if you are if you hear a song or you you know you hear a melody or you hear a beat i think what really gets you or what ministers to you is that you are considering in your heart you're considering god in your heart if i'm ever in a place where i am considering in my heart and in my mind i am considering how good god is that his word is always right that he alone is righteous that he alone is good that he has been good to me that he you know he he created the heavens and the earth he created the trees the birds the wind i'm looking around me and i'm considering his mercy to me right i believe that's what really gets us um or what ministers to us or what gets you you know to just really humble yourself before this great god um considering what god has done considering who god is yes as we wrap this up um there are you know spiritual songs there are there are there are, there are gospel christian spiritual songs there are songs that there are songs yes that are inspired by the holy spirit and when we say songs are inspired by the holy spirit this is not a unique experience to any particular set of people you as a believer you all have the holy spirit in, in you you have the holy spirit in you right and the holy spirit is what connects you to the father you have the holy spirit in you there's nothing there's no special assignment or special thing where you know that person is the only one who can receive a song from the holy spirit no you know that the spirit that is within you once you are saved it's god's spirit and it is that spirit that makes you to know that you have a father that's the spirit that connects you to god right so when you are going through your own day if you consider the greatness of god and you are you really open up your hearts to how good god has been to you the melodies will flow right and in that moment you can say oh yes the song is inspired by the holy spirit we should really have songs that are inspired by the Holy Spirit every day. You should be having a song that is inspired by the Holy Spirit every day. I should be having a song that is inspired by the Holy Spirit every day because I am considering the goodness, the greatness, the mercy, the awesomeness, the kindness of God to me. That's where the spiritual songs come from. They are songs in the Spirit, from the Spirit. It is only the Spirit within me that connects me to God. Right? It is the spirit within me that makes me to cry out, Abba, Father. It is from God's spirit within me. Everything that I do as a believer, it doesn't have any other origin. It, should al it must always originate from who I am, which is I'm a person who has the spirit of God in him or, or her. So my whole life, every song I sing, every melody I make, every beat I hum, or how do I say, you know, you're humming the sound. If you are staying connected to the Spirit of God, that is a spiritual song. When you are considering the goodness, the faithfulness, the purity, the uprightness of, of our good God, that is a spiritual song. It is a spiritual song. Amen. If we had a bit of time, I would have liked us to consider, you know, why, you know, today or we find in our day that i'll use myself as an example there was a time in my life where i would never listen to any so-called you know christian song i thought they were very boring right they're very boring they're very slow you know they didn't have good beats they didn't have good sounds i thought they were very very boring but why why was that uh, you know, at that, at that stage of my life. Why did I feel that way? Why did you? You probably felt that way yourself. We wouldn't have to consider that, but I'd like you to, to, to consider that yourself as you go through your week. You know, why do I get excited, you know, when I hear, you know, this, this you know, rap song or this beat or that beat or whatever? Why are you getting excited? Ask yourself that question. If I'm a younger person, you know, why do I not like... The Christian songs, you know, what is it about a Christian song that does not, you know, make me like it? Why do I feel it's boring? Why do I feel it's too slow? And I think what I would say to you is that you have to consider the state of your spirit. You got to consider the state of your heart. If you are, if your heart and in your mind and in your spirit, you are looking 
and considering God, you're connected to your Father. I'm telling you, the Christian songs will make a lot of sense to you. It will edify you, it will equip you, it will embolden you. It will really set you on a different path. So in summary, psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, they are a great way for us to praise our God. And we know that why we praise God. We praise Him because of who He is. We praise Him because of His goodness. We praise Him because of His righteousness. We praise Him that He is all because He is the only one who is always right. So, again, as we go through the week, what you have learned here today, hymns, spiritual songs, psalms, not just to gather the knowledge, but we have to practice these things. So I encourage you to do this uh, during the course of your week. Let's just say a word of prayer as we wrap this up. Pray again what we prayed at the beginning. Father, give me the grace, grant me the spirit, grant me the heart to praise you in psalms, in hymns, and in spiritual songs. Grant me the grace to always make melody in my heart to you. Grant me the grace to consider your goodness, your faithfulness, and your grace always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.